All right, so we're looking at set five, problem number one. Um, we have this piecewise function that breaks over 300. That is the rate at which people are entering an escalator. Um, they're leaving at a constant rate of seven tenths of a person per second. And at the beginning of this all, there are 20 people in the line, right? So how many people enter the line during the first 300 seconds? So that's really just taking the integral from 0 to 300 of what we're calling R of T here. Um, so you got to type that whole thing into the calculator, dt, which works out to be 270 people. All right. Part B says, all right, during this interval, there are always people in line for the elevator, how many people are at time 300, right? So, well, we're starting with 20 people. In the first 300 minutes, we've added 270. And then we're taking away, not 300 minutes, 300 seconds, 7 tenths of a person every second. So really, this is just a matter of simplifying this expression which means that there are 80 people in line at time 300. All right, part C. Um, if I'm above 300, what is the first time that there are no people in line for the escalator, right? So you're going to note that above 300, the number entering the line is zero. Okay, so at 300 there are uh, 290 people in there, right? And we're taking away 7 tenths of a person every second, right? They're not at 300, it's not 290. 290 people have entered the line at time 300, right? Because there's 20 to begin with, 270 more in the first 300 seconds. So there's 290 people in the line that are all coming out at seven tenths of a person so we need to know when does this go to zero well this is just 290 is equal to seven tenths of t we divide by seven tenths and we get t is approximately 414.285 seconds in so Again, parts B and C there, not a whole lot of calculus, more just understanding the problem. Part D becomes an optimization problem. All right, so part D says from 0 to 300, at what time T is the number of people in line at a minimum? So this is optimization. To the nearest whole number, find the number of people in line at that time. Justify the answer. All right, so... Part D, um, the number of people in line is the number of people being added to the line at time T, which is going to be R of X dX, minus the number of people who've come out of the line in those T seconds, plus the 20 that were there to begin with. All right, so that's the number of people. We want to minimize that, so we have to take its derivative. Fundamental theorem of calculus says that this is just R of t. The derivative of that is 0.7, and the derivative of that is 0. All right, so I need to know when is this thing equal to 0. That, I can throw R of t into the calculator and figure out when is this thing equal to 0. And it happens when t is equal to 33.0132. Nine eight and t is one sixty six point five seven four seven two. So that you can get with your calculator skills. So my critical points then are zero. Let's call this one t one. We'll call that one t two and three hundred. Right. So how many people are in at time zero. We know that that's 20. 
how many people are in it time t1. So I take this thing and I throw that value into there. And that comes out with roughly 3.803. Uh, for time t2, I take this thing, throw it into there. So the number of people at time t2 is about 158, oops, 158. 0 0.070 and then the number of people at 300 we figured out earlier is 80 so there's your maximum so the maximum occurs at time t equals 33.013 to the nearest number uh, seconds and to the nearest number of people that appears to be p is 158 peoples all right so that's problem number one. Let's move on to problem number two. All right, problem two, we're researching a boat that's in the, oh, this is plankton, it's in the sea. They give you a density function. Uh, the density function is this P of H. Uh, the density function is good from zero to 30. And then once we get above 30, it switches to this f of h, which is unknown, um, and all that. So we want to find p prime of 25. Well, p, 20, p prime of 25 um, is on 0 to 30, so you literally just load that into the calculator. Take the derivative of whatever that p thing is at 25, and you're going to get negative 1.179. Okay, so this number is in the units of millions of cells per cubic meter, right? That's the unit there, right? So at depth of 25 meters, the... Um, number of plankton cells is decreasing by negative 1.179 million cells per cubic meter um that's the rate that it's decreasing as per meter right per meter downward so it's pretty much what's happening that we're decreasing negative 1.1 or by it's not that it's positive 1.179 million cells per cubic meter every meter we go down Right, so that's the instantaneous rate of change of the density of the cells. All right, so that's a little tricky. Part B, not as bad. Uh, part B says you have this vertical column of water. Each of the slices of this column has an area of three uh, square meters. So we're doing an accumulation here from zero to 30. So they each have an area of three, and then they have this density of whatever P of H is, D, H, and you throw that in the calculator, and you take that to the nearest, uh, to the nearest million is 1,675 million plankton cells. All right, so let's look at part C. All right, so part C says that um, the F function, which is the function when H is above 30, is always dominated by this U function. And that the U function, um, as it goes to infinity, goes to 105. Um, so what we want is to show that no matter what, if I pick a K that's above 30, 
no matter what, that's going to have less than 200 million plankton cells in it. So the number of plankton cells between um, or in this column at a depth of k, when k is bigger than 30, is going to be 3 times 0 to 30 of p, because that's the density until they get to 30, plus 3 times 30 to whatever k is of f, because that's what I get when I get above 30, right? All right, so we know that this was like 1675 and some change. So this thing has to be always below 1676. That's from part B. Um, we know that this is dominated by the U function. So 1676 plus 3, 30 to K of U of H D H. But we also know that this is dominated by 30 to infinity of U of H, right? Because this is always increasing. And we know that this value is 105. Which is equal to 1991, which is always less than 2000. And we've got it. So that's part C of that problem. All right, let's move on to problem number three. All right, so problem number three is like, here's your typical graph again, all right? And a function that's relating to that graph. All right, so the graph is a continuous function. G, G is the derivative of F, and G is piecewise linear from negative three to, or negative five to three. And then it's got this quadratic once I get above three until I get to six. So we're given f of one, we want to find f of negative five. G is the derivative of f. So the integral from negative five to three of g of x dx should equal f of one minus f of negative five. That's the fundamental theorem of calculus. All right, so this integral, because it's all linear, we can get this is negative three times three because there's a rectangle there, minus one half one three because there's a triangle, plus zero because there's this little straight line there, plus half times one times two because there's another triangle sticking up, is equal to f of one, we're told is three, minus f of negative five. If you simplify this, you're going to end up with negative 9.5 is equal to 3 minus f of negative 5. This means f of negative 5 is equal to 12.5. There's part A. All right, so let's look at part B. Part B is almost like simpler. It says, what is the integral from 1 to 6 of g of x dx? Okay, so from... 1 to 3 is just a rectangle, so that's 2 by 2. Um, and then from 3 to 6, well, now I have to take 3 to 6 has to be 2 times x minus 4 squared dx. Through to the inside, there is 1, so that makes this nice. Just becomes 2 thirds x minus 4 cubed from 3 to 6. 4 plus 2 thirds, let's see, 6 minus 4 times 2 is 2 cubed is 8, negative 1 cubed is 1, or negative 1, so that's going to become positive, 9 divided by 3 is 3, so this is 4 plus 6, which is 10. All right, so that nicely works out to be oddly a whole number under a parabola. All right, so let's look at part C of the problem. All right, so I have the open interval from negative five to six, and um, 
when is f both increasing and concave up? So remember that f prime of x is equal to g of x. So f prime of x is greater than 0. This is going to be increasing on the intervals from 0 to 4 and 4 to 6. g is increasing on those intervals. f double prime of x is going to be equal to g prime of x. So this is the slope of g. So it's basically asking when is g increasing. So f double prime of x is greater than 0. And g is increasing on negative 2 to negative 1, increasing on 0 to 1, and increasing on 4 to 6. So this um, overlaps with this, right? So we get an overlap on 0 to 1, and we get an overlap on 4 to 6. And this is when I am both increasing and concave up. All right, so there's that problem, right? And let's move on to the next one. Part, this is part C. Part D asks me about a point of inflection. Um, G double prime only uh, changes sign. at x equals 4. It's the only place where it does that immediately. Um, so, because it goes from decreasing to increasing immediately at x equals 4. So this means that the only point of inflection occurs at x equals 4, because that's the only point you have an immediate sign change at. Alright, so let's look at Problem four. All right, so looking at problem four, we've got the data table. It's going to ask us some questions about it. The, the H is the height of a tree after T years, right? So use the data table to get H prime of six. We don't have six on the table, so we use the seven and the five. So H prime of six is approximately H of seven minus h of 5 over 7 minus 5, which is 11 minus 6 over 2, which is 5 halves, right? So this means tree is growing at approximately uh, 5 halves of a meter per year. I guess you could say it's growing at 5 meters every 2 years when t is 6 years. Alright, part B. Um, explain why there has to be at least one time t on 2 to 10 where the derivative is 2. Alright, so you gotta find a place where the average rate of change is going to be 2. And that looks like it's um, from 3 to 5. So H differentiable on 3, 5 open uh, implies by the mean value theorem that there exists C on 3, 5 such that H prime of C is h of 5 minus h of 3 over 5 minus 3, which is 6 minus 2 over 2, which is 4 over 2, which gets me the 2 that I want. Since c is on 3, 5, that means that c has to be on 2, 10. So there exists c that this is true on on to 10. All right, so that's all of part B. Part C says use the trapezoidal rule with four subintervals to indicate uh, approximate average height. So average height is going to be 1 over 10 minus 2. Integral from 2 to 10 of h of t 
dt, which is 1 eighth, times 2 plus 1.5 over 2. The width of that is 1. 6 plus 2 over 2, the width of that one is 2. 11 plus 6 over 2, the width of that one is 2. 15 plus 11 over 2, the width of that one is 3. Technically, you can end the problem right there. Uh, I guess it should be in an approximate um, because you don't have to simplify. But let's go for a little bit further just to get an answer. 1 eighth, this works out to be 7 fourths, 8, 17, and 39. And if you do some of the grinding out, this is 263 over 32 meters is the average height from year 2 to year 10 using a trapezoidal approximation. All right, so let's get to part D. All right, part D deviates from the whole thing. It tells me that height g of x is a function of diameter x over 100 x uh, and then 1 plus x where these g is the height and x is the diameter both in meters when the tree is 50 meters tall so this is a related rates problem the diameter of the base of the tree so dx dt is uh, 0 0.03 which is probably going to get written as 3 over 100 when the diameter is, oh, nope, when the height is 50. All right, so we have to find the change in height with respect to time. So this is implicit. So this is low the high minus high the low over low squared right but then because it's implicit oops put that back hold on let's pause for a second sorry fix that uh, because it's implicit there's a dx dt on this because we're taking a derivative with respect to t not x, right? So this is going to be, all right, let's see what we got here. Ah, all right, we know that g is 50. We know that g is 100x over 1 plus x, which means when g is 50, let's see, 50 plus 50x, is equal to 100x, this is gonna be nice. 50 is 50x, x is one. So when g is 50, x is one. So now I want dg dt. When x is one and d, x dt is three over 100, right? So this is gonna give me two times 100 minus 100 over four times dx dt is 3 over 100. So this is 100 over 4 times 3 over 100. The hundreds cancel makes that 3 fourths. So the change in height with respect to time is 3 fourths of a meter per year. All right, so that's all the problems. Um, if you have questions, drop me an email, stop into the um, drop-in time. Again, I hope you're doing well. We'll talk to you soon.